this technique called McKenzie technique. Yep. You've been big on, and actually yeah. some patients that have come in, I see in you the excitement that you have for helping these types of patients. So explain to our patients what exactly McKenzie technique is, and that's a separate thing from traditional chiropractic education too. It is, and it's so actually, it for? it's used by a lot of uh, physical therapists as well. Okay, yeah. But um, yeah, so basically the goal of McKenzie is to empower our patients with the tools that they need to succeed at home. So when you come into the office, we may give you, just if you were to come into a standard chiropractic visit, yep. we may give you a couple exercises to do at home. We may not do them with you in the office. Mm -hmm. McKenzie is a little bit more of a hands-off approach from the practitioner's perspective. But more what we're doing- More of an educational process. Exactly, but what we're doing is we're trying to figure out what directions create pain, what directions don't create pain. So if you're coming in, maybe you have low back pain that's kind of shooting down one of your legs. Yep. So what, what I would do as an assessment is I, I'll put you through typical range of motion. So we'll kind of have you bend forward, bend backwards, kind of see if we can figure out what positions are triggering that pain. Yep. And then once we figure that out, then we do a series of repetitive exercises in the office to see if that pain improves. And how long does this take? So usually by the end of the first visit, I know if McKenzie technique is the right technique for you. And if so, we will proceed with that in the future. So like five to 10 but minutes you sit there yeah, and you're able to yeah. see these movements. Within five to 10 minutes, we'll know if the pain basically is what we call centralizing. So if you have a, if you have ridiculous pain or pain that travels down so into sciatica, the leg. Right? Yep. So Comes just like sciatica, yep. If I'm having you do repeated movements over and over again, I'm looking to see if that pain is coming out of the leg and traveling more into the lower back. Got it. So, so it centralizes back up there. Exactly. And then while the exercise is being performed, it yep. comes back up. What yep. happens if they stop and it goes back down the leg? If they stop and it goes back down the leg, then what well, what were they doing when they stopped? Were they in a position I where- I got you. So, so it all kind of depends. But I kind of like to look at McKenzie as a red light, green light system. Mm -hmm. So if we're thinking green light, we do the exercises and then after the exercise is over, the pain is gone in the leg. Yep. It may still be in the lower back, but it's out of the leg. So okay. that's a, to me, that's a green light. That means we figured out what direction we need to move in to get that pain to resolve. I got you. Okay. And then the goal is going to be to continue to coax them into that direction. Exactly. And figuring out maybe if, you know, maybe someone is in a desk all day and kind of sitting throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to alter their biomechanics when they're sitting at a desk, right? Yep. So we're gonna have them use a lumbar roll or some sort yep. of support behind them so I that they get a little more extension in their low back. Yep. So basically it's just a way to give the patient tools at home, yep. whether it's through exercises or through, you know, just a couple lifestyle alterations we can do. Yeah, and that's huge because yeah. most patients at least with radicular pain or the site radicular is when it goes down the leg or yep. it, when it goes into a limb so it goes down right. the leg or goes into the arm yep. and when that happens it becomes very difficult for patients i've noticed over the years to feel like they've got any control over the condition right? right they yep. feel very lost and very hopeless in terms of this improving because it is such a confusing pain to feel right. i mean it's not very often people have radicular pain I, I should I take that back. They it's very common for you to experience it at some point in your life, but it's not one of those pains that you experience on a regular basis right. when you're young, getting older, and all of that. Sure. All right. So leg stuff. Yep. You work on, and then we said limbs, so it goes into the arm too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So yep. you do the same thing with the head and yep. neck into the arm. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So it's just a series of movements we're bringing you through. Yep. Through those movements, we see, okay, is this movement making the pain better or worse? If it's making it better, then we continue to do that movement repeatedly. Yep. And then usually what will happen is if it's successful, the pain will start to move out of the arm and just focus more in the neck. Yep. And in your experience in the, in the past, um, have you had patients that were like surgical candidates that you ended up treating with this? Yeah. And were they set up for surgery? Because I've had patients in the past that have been set up for surgery mm -hmm. and they come in they're like hey, you know what i'm gonna give chiropractic a shot i've never been to a chiropractor someone yeah. told me to check you out and then we get the pain out of the leg mm -hmm. and by i mean we've talked before the way i approach is similar but yet your approach is a lot more systematic which i like it's mm -hmm. something that we can really give patients and educate them to do at home and give even medical providers to have them know what we are actually doing every visit absolutely so your question. what's that what's your question i have a question yeah so when you say like if you know you do those like assessments to see if it's a good fit or not so like yep. for example if somebody's pain isn't changing yep. like and you do those techniques is that when you say okay mckenzie method's not for you then you have to go to other 
things yeah. like so if like I were to move or whatever but the pain never comes out of my leg yep does that mean that it's something that probably wouldn't you wouldn't continue to potentially use so it's okay. one of those it depends okay. so usually I don't give up after the first visit okay. so I usually give it about two visits where I'm doing the, the repeated motions gotcha. with the patients and then if at that point we're not seeing progress then I'll probably switch to a different therapy I gotcha. okay but one of the issues that some doctors will run into is they don't do enough repetitions before they start to see change so they'll kind of I give see. up a little too quickly yeah so as long as you're patient with us and you know that if that technique doesn't work yeah. we'll switch to something else yeah then um okay yeah and we can I, we, bounce we, back we, in you you can bounce in and out of that technique as exactly. well right like sometimes yeah. and there are with our toolbox of treatment methods yeah. we can uh, we can become a little more creative with targeting that area that mm -hmm. might be uh, restricting them from okay. noticing improvement with that right. yep. and then all of a sudden we kind of tweak around with that we get them over that little hump mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we get back to McKenzie method exactly. and you start seeing that stuff start centralizing yeah. Okay. Yeah. so at the end of the day it's just a matter of what's right for the patient yeah. McKenzie is one tool that we have mm -hmm. like Dr. Jeff just said like trial so. and error on a sense. exactly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay yeah cool. and patients that see success with it they see long-term success with they this do too. because it gives them the tools they need to say okay th this movement is something i should avoid so yep. then they don't do it anymore and yep. so really figuring out what the root cause of their pain is what yep. triggered it yep. is huge for seeing improvement of patients yeah one of the big things with radicular patients is giving them ownership and control over that uh that condition and uh, helping them understand what they can do and what they can't do mm -hmm. yep. so that they they won't have it happen again because if you have ridiculous symptoms or if you've had sciatica if you had it go down the arm you are at risk of having that happen again mm -hmm. for the rest of your life oh yeah right but yeah. we teach you um and these are a great great system of teaching patients what they can and can't do and little exercises for when they notice these early indicators to start tapping into those again if they've forgotten to do them yep. so that they end up noticing consistent improvement and that's how you get it in a stage of like it's never returned or it's right. completely gone away right cool yeah. all right so your um previous surgical situations yeah do you treat post-surgery as well What's I McKenzie have. with post-surgical? Because I've treated some post-surgery. Yep. So what's McKenzie with post-surgical? Anything yeah, so there? So I mean, as long as there's no restrictions, you know, that the surgeon sent our way or told the patient, then yep. I will def I will certainly bring them through a similar type of uh, process where they're doing the repeated exercises. But if the surgery, you know, got rid of the radicular pain, I gotcha. so then it, maybe it's not really something I would go too far down with a patient. So you um, target it with radicular symptoms. If the surgery was successful, generally. most likely it was, yep. it gets rid of that radicular pain. I and do. Then, yep. Yep, and then yep. you move on to another treatment option. Yep. All right, cool, cool.